unlucky in love while he was alive, recently departed Michael, is told that to cross over, he must find his soulmate, taking him to pursue the afterlife dating circuit, where he learns what love truly means. Michael, a striving actor, is carted on a hospital gurney with visible injuries as he recalls Stephanie, a redhead he had a crush on when he was younger. One day, he got her to come home with him and fooled around with a pair of handcuffs, getting Stephanie to agree to be cuffed to his bed. Suddenly, he heard his sister running up the stairs. Panicked, he couldn't release Stephanie in time and his sister reported back to their parents that there was someone handcuffed to his bed. Afterward, he went downstairs while Stephanie, mortified, waited in his room. He saw his parents at the dining table. Then his mom gave him $10 to take Stephanie to Burger King. Suddenly, a woman in a red dress named Scarlett tells him he needs to focus while a flatlining cardiac monitor blares in the background, and Michael finds himself in a bright white office. The woman asks Michael to recall how he died, confusing him but he focuses. He remembers his girlfriend Amy breaking up with him at the airport on their way to visit his family. On his way home, driving on the freeway, Michael realizes that he doesn't have a quarter for the toll so he has to get to an ATM. Unfortunately, he misses his exit and prepares to back up but he sees a quarter on the car floor and reaches for it. He gets back up and sees a truck driving towards him, and he tells Scarlett that's the last thing he remembers. Back in the white room, the woman asks Michael to think hard and remember what else happened. Touching his forehead, he sees that he's still holding the quarter, triggering his memory. So he asks the woman if he hit something. The woman tells him it's easier if he figures it out for himself and tells him a truck hit him. Michael adds that after that, he was sitting in the office, telling her about Stephanie. Realizing something extraordinary is happening, Michael abruptly stands up and asks if he's in heaven. Scarlett tells him no and introduces her Herself, telling him he's dead and expresses her condolences. Still in denial, Michael asks Scarlett what happened, and again, she tells him he's dead. She adds that he unfortunately died single, leaving his soul incomplete and that's a problem because souls cross over in pairs. Furthermore, he needs to find his soulmate, but dumbfounded, Michael asks how and she tells him it's not as hard as it sounds. She excuses herself, telling him she has thousands of appointments today. He asks where he should go and she tells him the entire world is through a door behind him. Afterward, Michael passes through the door and finds himself back in New York City. As he walks around, he learns that the living can only be seen as shadows. He walks by a playground and a ball rolls in his direction. So he tries to grab it but the ball passes through his hands. Soon after, Michael enters a bar where there are other dead people. He tries getting their attention but they all ignore him. He goes behind the bar and tries to pick up a bottle and to his surprise, he can grab it. Grateful, he thanks God for allowing alcohol consumption and proceeds to drink until he is inebriated. Back out on the streets, Michael tries to get women to talk to him but fails over and over. Frustrated, he begins complaining until a man tells him to stop. Relieved that someone acknowledged him, Michael asks how he's supposed to meet someone when he rarely sees anyone. The man tells him all he needs to do is to squint his eyes. Seeing another bar, Michael enters and says hello to a woman reading a book but she tells him she's waiting for someone else. Curious, he asks how she knows he's not worth talking to and if it was the polite way he said hello. Mildly amused, the woman agrees to engage in small talk. The woman cuts to the chase and tells Michael that charm doesn't go far in the afterlife. She says it is not like the world of the living, adding that they are here to find the person they didn't find in life and spend the rest of eternity with. The following day, Michael squints hard in his apartment. He focuses and sees his family going through his stuff. Barbie, his sister, asks her father if he was disappointed in Michael and what he did with his life. His father tells her that he was happy as long as his son stayed true to himself. His mother hasn't accepted her son's death, refusing to say goodbye since she feels like he's still here. Then, his family gets out of the apartment with Michael's stuff. His father tells them that Michael is not in his boxes of junk. He's in their memories, but the mother tells them it's not good enough. As the car door closes, his mom stares up at his apartment before the car drives off. Somber, Michael waves goodbye to his family. Later, while walking through the park, Michael realizes that one good thing about being dead is that he now has time to see his friends. In a different part of the city, Michael reaches an apartment, yelling out his friend's name, Angelo. As he is about to give up, Angelo appears at the top of the stairs, telling Michael that he's never been happier to see a friend dead. They go into his apartment and he tells him he's been reading. But a few seconds later, he admits he's bored out of his mind. Angelo continues saying that, at first, he tried to find his soulmate but kept failing. 
He now spends his days watching living people walking, drinking, and reading. When Michael asks where he can find a partner, Angelo notices the quarter his friend is holding. Surprised, Angelo questions where he got it, to which his friend says he died with it. Later, Angelo brings Michael to a speed dating bar for the deceased that gets weirder with each person he meets. Exhausted, he tells Angelo he forgot how brutal dating is. Trying one more time, Michael approaches a woman. The woman tells him they met in life and she didn't like him so there is no point now. She tells him to go because she doesn't have time for him. And Michael tells her time is all they got. Amused at his ignorance, she tells him that time is not unlimited in the afterlife and points out that if it was, it would be crawling with unlovable world civil war veterans. Realizing her point, Michael, shaken by the idea, leaves. Out on the street, Michael calls out to Scarlet. Not knowing how to get her attention, he screams which annoys a dog, threatening he won't stop shouting until she appears. Years. Eventually, Scarlet appears, telling Michael he does not get to summon her and that she never said he had all the time in the world. Suddenly transported back to the white office, Michael asks why she didn't tell him there was a deadline, but she tells him he only needs to focus on finding his soulmate. Worried, he asks what happens if he fails, and she tells him he'll cease to exist. The man thinks it's unfair, so Scarlet tells him that the universe is not fair, it's just big. He asks if he's getting on her nerves for having a lot of questions, but she wonders who he asked before they met. Pondering the question, Michael thinks of the people he goes to for advice and heads to his agent, Jay. He hears his agent talking on the phone about recasting his one-man show, which upsets Michael. Later on, he finds Angelo hanging out in a girl's locker room. Michael bugs him to tell him what he's learned so far. His friend shares he's not so sure that he needs to cross over and that he'll just enjoy what's happening now. Moments later, Michael reflects his time in this new world. Now that time feels finite for him, he still wastes his time. Back in the city, Michael tells the universe that he's going to allow magic to happen. He flips his quarter. It lands on heads and he goes east. Michael enters the first place he sees and walks towards a woman at the bar. As he gets closer, he realizes she is alive and he blurts out that she's not dead and turns back around. Hearing this, the woman named Honeybee reacts and asks if that's his opening line. Surprised, Michael goes back and starts strikes up a conversation with the woman, amazed that she can see and hear him. He tells her he's there to meet a woman and that he's still around because he died alone from being too picky. Honeybee tells him she has been seeing a lot of dead people lately. Knowing that the man is lonely, she asks why he's alone, and Michael reciprocates the question. She says it's because she's not dead and says her friend is always late, hence her being alone at the bar. Bewildered that a living person can see him, Michael inquires more about it, to which she says she sees flickering people in the corner of her eyes. Michael shares that he needs to find love or he will cease to exist. Feeling his anxiety, Honeybee suggests thinking of something else, like baseball. Michael, excited to hear her talk about sports, asks if she likes baseball, and she says of course not, amusing him. He points out that she's probably not his soulmate since they haven't been wished away by the universe, but she tells him it's because she's alive and he's dead. Unexpectedly, Michael is interrupted by a man disappearing into the void behind the the woman, terrifying him, so he excuses himself. In the restroom, he ponders how unlucky and weird it is that he finally feels something for someone but is complicated by her being alive. Michael goes back to the bar and asks how she can talk and see him. She tells him she doesn't understand as well and although she's been seeing a lot of dead people, he's the first one she's talked to. Michael tells her she doesn't seem the type to be alone. Honeybee tells him maybe she's alone because she's picky and she's looking for something magical. Hesitantly, she also shares that her ex-boss, Patrick, is stalking her. She adds that he sends her weird emails, follows her around, and makes every other guy she meets uncomfortable. Realizing that he likes this woman, Michael introduces himself and learns her name. Feeling the connection as well, Honeybee asks Michael if he wants to go somewhere. While walking through the park, the two continue to get to know each other better. Honeybee then asks Michael how it feels to be dead. He expresses that he doesn't feel anything. It's like watching everyone eat from outside a restaurant window. He recalls when he was alive and felt empathy for everyone and everything. Overwhelming him at times, she probes further, asking him if he doesn't really feel anything. And he tells her aside from feeling drunk, he feels something for her. Then, Honeybee asks what he would want to feel most. Vulnerable, Michael shares that he wants to know the feeling you get when someone you love thinks about you from far away. Moments later, they get to Honeybee's apartment. And as they are about to cross the road, a cyclist almost hits her. Michael tries to hold Honeybee back but his hand 
man just goes past her. Outside Honeybee's doorstep, Patrick waits outside, so she tells him she's with someone. However, Patrick is confused because he can't see Michael. Patrick insists that they have a conversation, blocking Honeybee from the building entrance as Michael stands by helpless and desperately wanting to make him stop. Michael tells Honeybee to yell at Patrick to leave her alone. She yells and he steps aside, but tells her that they will see each other again because he can see it in her eyes. She tells him there is nothing in her eyes for him and that he was the reason why she had to leave a job she loved. Patrick loses it, yells back at her, and slams his bottle of wine on the pavement. Finally, the two make it to Honeybee's apartment, and Michael offers to scare him, but Honeybee isn't convinced. Michael suggests that she might like the attention she's getting from Patrick. Offended by his suggestion, Honeybee suggests that maybe Michael is jealous. After an awkward silence, he realizes how offensive he was, so he apologizes. Honeybee tells him to apologize again and she opens two bottles of beer. Staring at Michael as she drinks, she gives him a smirk and asks if he wants to see her room. In the bedroom, the two lie on the bed facing each other and Michael apologizes for not being able to touch her, saying that he's the worst choice for her. She agrees, stating he's dead and an alcoholic with bad jokes, but yet here she is. Later, the two walk around the city and talk all night, cherishing their time together. Michael stays with Honeybee until she falls asleep and then heads over to Angelo, telling him about the woman he met and wonders why they haven't crossed over. Angelo suggests that one of them is not feeling the same thing, but Michael is convinced it's mutual. He tells Angelo he's sure of how he feels and that if that isn't enough, then he'll make it enough. The following day, Michael meets Honeybee at a bar and she introduces him to her friend Faith. Since Faith can't see Michael, she thinks her friend is insane. To prove she's not, Honeybee tells her deceased friend to do something. As she says this, the waitress arrives with their margaritas. Michael gets up and lifts the server's skirt. Seeing what just happened, Faith lights up a cigarette while Michael reaches for her margarita and drinks it, further proving that he's sitting right across from her. In disbelief, Faith surrenders to the idea that her friend is dating a ghost and she gets to know more about the man. Across the room, Michael sees Jay having a meeting with someone. He excuses himself and as he gets closer, he hears them talking about his one-man show. He hears the replacement actor isn't comfortable doing it, but Jay convinces him that it's not stealing. It's honoring Michael's memory. Furious about the betrayal, Michael gets on top of the replacement actor and starts screaming at him, which seemingly affects the guy. Uncomfortable, the replacement actor excuses himself. Feeling victorious, Michael laughs and drinks the replacement actor's drink, spitting it back into his glass. Back at their table, Michael returns and learns that Faith left. The two continue talking and Michael notices Honeybee flicker in and out of existence, which puzzles him, so he excuses himself again. In the restroom, Michael summons Scarlet to ask her why Honeybee is flickering. She tells him that Honeybee is about to die soon, telling him it's good news but he disagrees. She adds that maybe this is how it's supposed to be, but Michael, unsatisfied with the answer, storms out of the restroom. On the streets, Michael catches up to Patrick and follows him into an apartment building unit. Here, a woman who seems to know him opens the door. Unexpectedly, Patrick shoots the woman and begins to flicker. Fearing that Patrick might go after Honeybee, Michael runs, but comes across Angelo on the street, sharing news that he just met a woman. Although excited for his friend, he tells him he has to go, but Angelo suddenly fades out of existence. Not knowing what to do, Michael tries to flip his quarter but it passes through his palm, signaling that he's close to fading as well. At Honeybee's apartment, Michael tells her that she has to go because she is in danger, but she insists that he tell her why. He offers her to flip a coin for it. If it lands on heads, then she must leave, but if it's tails, then she stays. The coin lands on heads, so she packs her things while Michael expresses his worry about losing her. Before she leaves, she flickers again and the man insists he'll fix everything. Elsewhere, Patrick talks to his reflection, referring to Honeybee. He declares that the end has come and that no one will love her the way he does. When Michael runs on the streets, Scarlet suddenly appears, telling him he can't change destiny. In another part of the city, Patrick spots Honeybee crossing the street and follows her down to the subway. Michael catches up to Honeybee at the train platform and tells her that he doesn't want to leave without telling her that he loves her. He expresses his love for her and wants to save her even if it means he doesn't get to spend eternity with her. In love, they share a passionate kiss and Patrick arrives, telling Honeybee that he loves her. He aims his gun at her, while Scarlet tells Michael it's his time to go now, but he refuses. Fortunately, a stranger disarms Patrick. Just as Honeybee is about to say that she loves Michael too, Patrick lunges forward, 
taking her with him off the platform as a train arrives. At Scarlett's office, she tells Michael to follow her to lead him to the next phase of his journey. He pleads for one last chance to say goodbye, but Scarlett just tells him to follow her. Michael finds himself back in the office where Honeybee is waiting. She turns around and quickly gets up, and they embrace and kiss. Honeybee stops to say that she loves him too, and the couple finally crosses over together. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.